It's been a new year for a couple of weeks now, but I am finally getting around to my most anticipated games of 2024. What's up, Brew Crew? I hope that all of you have made it into the new year safe, happy, and healthy. I gotta say, uh, when I sat down to start uh, thinking about doing my anticipated games list for this year, I kind of thought I was going to have trouble coming up with six. Not that there weren't any games worth getting excited about, there were just not a lot of them that I knew much about. But after doing some digging into some of these games, turns out there are a lot of games coming out this year, fingers crossed, that I'm really excited about. Uh, a couple of quick caveats. First, uh, this is based off of the information on BGG, which means that these games may or may not actually be released in 2024, but they are currently listed as a 2024 release. Uh, which brings me to the second caveat. Uh, I did not include any of the games from my 2023 anticipated list that are still pending release. So El Burro, Harrow County, and The Dark Quarter were all on my 2023 release, uh, expected release list, and now they're expected to be 2024 releases. But you can assume that I am still looking forward to those games. And if you want to hear more about what I have to say about those games, I'll put a link to my 2023 anticipated list in the description of this video. Um, also, this is probably going to be a fairly short video, because obviously I don't know too much about these games yet, having never played them. Alright, that's enough of that nonsense. Let's get on with the list. Six. So the first few games on this list are lower, not because I am less excited about them, uh, but I have had a chance to see them in action at least for a few minutes, although I did not get to play either of them myself. My number six on this list is Luthier. I've talked a lot about my love of Distilled on this channel, and this is by the same designer, Dave Beck. Uh, really, a big reason this game is on my anticipated games list is because of the amount of attention to detail that went into Distilled when combining theme and mechanism. And it looks like they're taking a similar approach here. I got a quick demo of this one at Gen Con last year, and it sounds really interesting. Uh, in this game you play as a luthier, or someone who makes stringed instruments like violins and guitars, it sounds like a worker placement game, uh, but your workers will ha all have a numeric value uh, assigned to them that represents their skill level. I've played other games with a similar concept, uh, but I'm very interested to see how Dave and uh, Paverson Games take that mechanism that I already like and turn it into a thematic Euro Dynamo. Five. Number five is Weirdwood Manor. Uh, which is another game that I got a chance to see at Gen Con last year. I tend to like co-ops, and I love the gimmick of this one. Uh, you're all wandering around in a haunted house, trying to protect it and its owners from all kinds of baddies trying to break in. Like a lot of co-op games, everyone has a special player power, but unlike a lot of games, this one has you moving around the rooms and the halls in the house. The house is basically a big dial, and the rooms and hallways are different rings on that dial that can be moved clockwise or counterclockwise. Uh, the kicker here, too, is that it uses an action retrieval mechanism like in Concordia. Uh, this is a mechanism that I love, but I've found very few games that, have really, that I've really enjoyed outside of Concordia and, to some extent, Barrage. But this game looks fantastic, the table presence is very cool, um, and, I mean, people love a good gimmick. Four. Number four for this year on my anticipated games list is Dragon Eclipse. Uh, there are a couple of reasons that this one is on this list, and I can confidently say that it has nothing to do with the fact that it's pretty much Pokemon the board game. I actually have very little knowledge of Pokemon, but it's all I see when trying to learn about this game. Uh, this is a game from Awakened Realms, who's made some really amazing games, and it definitely doesn't look like they held back on the miniatures quality in this one. 
Uh, what's different here, though, is that it's a game for one to two players. Now, a lot of thematic games can be played solo, but I haven't seen too many that are solo or two player only. It looks like this game starts you out with a little dragging companion of some kind, and you will travel around the world hunting down and either fighting or taming bigger and badder monsters and following a storyline. Then these monsters that you've tamed can now accompany you to capture even bigger monsters. It sounds like there's a really cool sense of progression in this game. I also love the fact that the game comes with a binder where you can store all of the cards of the monsters that you've collected, like a little mini dragon zoo. Um, I mentioned the miniatures earlier, and yeah, they look awesome, but the artwork in this game, I think, looks stunning. I love the cover, and all of the cards have the same sort of lighting and contrast, so I'm definitely excited for Dragon Eclipse. Three. Whereas my number four had some very epic looking artwork, I'd describe my number three's artwork as charming, and that's for the game Flow. This game has a gorgeous looking board and some really cute looking fantasy-ish creatures. Um, not that I'd expect any less from Andrew Bosley at this point. This game is a collaboration between Henry Audubon, designer of Parks and Cosmoctopus, and Johnny Pack, who has designed and developed too many games to list at this point. I really enjoy both of these designers' work, so between that and the beautiful artwork, I couldn't pass up putting this one on the list. Uh, from what it sounds like, this game is going to have a little exploration, a little contract fulfillment. It, it almost sounds a little sandboxy in nature. One thing that has me really excited about this one is that it says that it is not a story-driven campaign game, but you do have the ability to kind of level up your character in some ways. I love this. I'm on record uh, lately as, a, as saying that I'm a little bit over the campaign game thing, but I do love games with a sense of progression, and I love the idea of being able to level up without having to necessarily commit to a six-month campaign. I'm very excited to check this one out and see how it works. Uh, I still hope it feels as captivating as leveling up a character in a campaign game, but I have a lot of trust in these designers and I can't wait to try it out. Two. Number two is anticipated because of one of the names attached to it, and that's Undergrove. This is the latest game from Elizabeth Hargrave. She's made some really great games, and so just her name alone on the box is enough to pique my interest. Uh, she's not working alone on this game, though. It looks like she's designing it with uh, Mark Wooten, who has worked on a lot of games for AEG, including Doomtown and Thunderstone. I've never played any of these, but I do know that they are pretty well regarded. Um, it's kind of odd that we've had so many mushroom-themed games uh, all popping up around the same time, but I'm here for it. I grew up in a pretty rural part of West Michigan, and my family would often go foraging for morels in the spring. Um, wild mushrooms are kind of a weird, interesting, beautiful, and sometimes dangerous thing. Uh, I'm hoping that, just like in a lot of Elizabeth's other great uh, games, I'll get a bit of a sneaky education while playing it. Oh, and one very important thing, this game is being illustrated by Beth Sobel, who does some of my favorite board game art. So I'm definitely excited to check out Undergrove. Yeah. And finally, my number one most anticipated game of 2024 is actually a reworking of an older game that I own, but I have never played, and that's Cthulhu Dark Providence. Sounds like this is a rework of A Study, a Study in Emerald, um, which is a Martin Wallace game that I spent a good long while trying to track down because I didn't think it was going to end up coming back in print anytime soon. Uh, so now I suppose I've got to try the old one before I try the new one. Now, I own the second edition of A Study in Emerald, and I've heard rumors anyway that Dark Providence is closer to a re-implementation of the first edition. But outside of all of that, what interests me about this game is that it's a sort of team game. 
where you're going to have a secret alignment, either as a cultist or an investigator, but you're not going to know who is on your team. Uh, at the end of the game, only the player with the most points on the most dominant side between the cultists and investigators will be the sole winner. I think this is a really interesting and unique mechanism, not used very often in gaming, outside of a study in Emerald anyway. And I'm really curious to see how it plays out. Uh, I might love it, but there's a chance that I won't. But to me, I think the risk here is worth it to try something that is that clever of an idea. All right, everybody, those are my most anticipated games for 2024. Uh, let me know in the comments what games you are looking forward to this year. Uh, are there any that were originally supposed to come out in 2023 that you're still excited for? Uh, I still can't wait to try out the Dark Quarter. But otherwise, that's it for this video. And until next time, let's get another round for the table.